All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, bitches. Yeah, after the last video that I made, well, that video was a fiasco uh, in the sense that I got a ton of errors, a ton of bad results and a very weird explanation of uh, everything. And uh, I'm not sure if bad experimentation what I did there. The experimentation was like the usual way I'm experimenting. But uh, overall, I don't give it a 10 because it was full of errors, basically. And I had to swim between those errors and, and, and kind of find a way, you know. It put me to think about uh, the problem. And the problem uh, was only the power supply, the filtering and the load resistor here. So this is what I'm doing. This is how I started today. And right now I already made all the tests and I got a very surprising result and a very surprising uh, answer to the problem that was bugging me from the beginning of this experiment, from the first day. And I, I had to cut down uh, everything I could until I reached this point. This is this is it. This is the solution for the problem that I had all, all this time. So remember uh, in the last two videos, actually, I made the experiment using so 50 watts, one ohm uh, resistor. I was thinking, let me try with a bigger load resistor value. And what I'm having here is 470 ohms uh, with a tolerance of 10% because probably you can see it already. It's a resistive coil uh, winded over um, the ceramic. Usually it's a ceramic core it's saying there are 4 watts. Okay, so this is a 4 watts, way less than this, but it is equivalenting it and even surpassing it because of the bigger resistance that it's having. That's uh, the difference, you know. That's one ohm. This is 470 times more than that. So uh, this is way better, even if it's a lower power. What I'm having here is this one, the first one, 1000 microfarads at 25 volts. Yeah, you can see it, right? 1000 microfarads. Everything that you are seeing here, I did test it with this 3300 microfarads and it does not really uh, do anything uh, better than this 1000. Uh, I'm getting exactly the same uh, oscillogram there with both of them. So it doesn't matter. I can even put uh, even smaller than 1000 uh, here. Okay, I, I did left this uh, uh, bleeder resistor there because it is helping a lot uh, bleeding out the, the capacitor uh, when the when the power when the transformer is turned off. So I'm connecting uh, this point 7.5 volts and this point which is the ground. These two points I'm, con I'm having them connected and here is that 7 volts that is going here in this point uh, is filtered by this capacitor 10 kilo bleeder and this is another wire here through this uh, 470 ohms resistor and getting back. Uh, so I, I'm having here these values and I did test it with this 100 ohms and uh, it was getting warm. Not hot but it was warming up so I understood very quickly that this is a bit too weak at 5 watts the resistance value and I took it out and I got into my box with uh, extremely scrapped and extremely random <laughs> power resistors uh, that I got them from God knows where so I don't have that many uh, look at this one this one I tested the shit out of it and I remember I did it I burned it like this and I believe it's still good <laughs> it's good enough uh, but not right now in other times in other fun experiments and I find uh, two actually 470 ohms but I choose this bigger one because it's bigger wattage the other one was a bit smaller bigger the bigger the better now enough talking let's play it let's uh, actually uh, watch it I should probably make a circuit diagram for this so this is positive end this is the capacitor which is this one uh, which is 1000 microfarads with a 10 kilo bleeder uh, in parallel with it and uh, this is the test load resistor 470 ohms at 4 watts in this case uh, and probably I I could use uh, even less wattage for this uh, bigger value but I want to be sure uh, everything is running smoothly uh, right now so this is the actual circuit that I'm having here although it's looking like it's, everything is in parallel but it is actually a straight line like that this is a power line what I'm having here actually I'm not uh, testing for power well I'm taking care of the power with this bigger uh, res uh, power resistor here but I'm, I'm I'm testing for the correct functionality, the correct uh, rectification of the line to not have that uh, pulse DC reading on my oscilloscope like I had it all this time. So uh, if you remember when I was testing this one ohm resistor, I was having a pulsed DC um, reading on my oscilloscope there. But today with this circuit that I'm having here with this particular value and higher, so from this value up, if I'm putting one kilo, 10 kilo, whatever uh, I'm, putting, I'm putting here, it will do well. If I'm and the reverse is also very important. If I'm putting less than this value, well, actually, it was uh, good enough with 100 ohms, but at very at bigger wattage, bigger than five watts. So uh, if you lower the resistance, you have to increase the wattage. That 100 ohms was a smooth waveform, but it was heating up very quickly. So with this value here, this is a safe value. What I'm having here is it's not uh, heating up. So let's see the waveform. Uh, let's power the transformer here, and uh, voila. Ta -da 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 -da. I didn't have this when when I was connecting this resistor back to the ground like like I'm having it here connected I didn't have this clean waveform it's a single line it is right smack in the middle uh, here you see if I'm moving this you can see it yeah you see it 
there this one and now at 100 milliseconds there i'm getting this very uh nice squiggly line i did it purposely like this to actually see uh like this is exactly like before but at a very zoomed in um, reading with my oscilloscope my oscilloscope can barely read it and you cannot see anything here unfortunately because this is actually continuous ah uh, uh what we are seeing here even if it's uh this jagged and uh, triangular wave that we are seeing there even if it's very zoomed in what we are having here we are looking very close to it to see it oscillating like this it is bloody straight you see that it's not a sinusoidal waveform like it was before so th this is the correct waveform this is the continuous waveform even if it's a little bit zigzagged like that if we are going out from it not so close to it it's looking like a uh, like it's a it's a straight line and this is very very successful at this point this uh zigzagging that you are seeing there is because of this capacitor which is a bit uh, low value if i'm changing it with a bigger one with this 3300 microfarads this uh zigzagging will get even smaller it will still be there but it will be very very small let me actually change it right so right now i changed this 1000 microfarads with this 3300 you are clearly seeing it here if we are looking very very close to it it's still zigzagging but very very fine zigzagging and uh, let's see if I can actually zoom in. Yeah, you see it? There. It is uh, finer than the one that I had it before. Uh, yeah, you see? It's looking like it's very... like It's uh, almost like a continuous line, but from afar. Depends very much by the filter capacitor that I'm using it here. And also the load resistor. That's very important. But this circuit is working absolutely fine with this capacitor too. I don't need too much filtering. Even if it's looking a little bit zigzaggy because it's super zoomed in, it's super close, this 1000 is good enough and even a lower value than this. Uh, is good enough i put everything back together so now i put exactly as it was before uh, when it was having this uh, one ohm resistor but now it's having this 470 ohm resistor here in series and this is the driver for the mosfet is switching the mosfet which in turn is switching this uh, resistor and this is the waveform isn't it beautiful absolutely stunning absolutely perfect and uh, check the the voltages here voltage peak to peak is 7.9 okay it's going under the wave uh, zero line a little bit for some reason i'm not completely sure why probably it's because this is a winding resistor and not a film resistor and probably it is interfering a little bit with, with it and is increasing a little tiny little bit the voltage uh duty cycle is uh, what 88 percent here it should read uh, 10 percent duty cycle right now we are tweaking and i'm having 19 unfortunately there but i swear to god i did got 11 i got not 19 not 20 this 20 that i'm having right now oh huh. Oh, uh, probably, uh, let me change this 1000 microfarads. So this is the, the waveform. I couldn't find the problem. I'm having a frequency of 2 kilohertz and duty cycle of 20%. Unfortunately, I did get a very good uh, result uh, with a duty cycle of 11%. And here was 2.2 kilohertz. Here, I'm measuring between the drain and the source. Right now, I modified it with this value, 470 ohms, this load resistor at 4 watts. So this is the probe right here and that one let me actually change the probe from here to here and see if this two kilohertz that we are seeing here it's mirrored on the gate of the transistor i'll put it there and voila that's the frequency on the gate and it's inversed you see the dot cycle is 80 percent and frequency 1.96 kilohertz and it's absolutely mirrored on this side this is what a pulsed mosfet should look like when you probe the drain and its gate this should be inverse from this it's adding this transistor this mosfet here is acting like a not gate Th this is back again uh, to the normal 100 microseconds it says there um, voltage peak to peak 7.70 this is uh, an absolute success now i'm happy so the problem the biggest problem uh, that eluded me all this time was a fucking resistor this loading resistor that uh, i'm using very interesting lesson and very interesting uh, problems with the power supply issues and everything and the filtering and wow i'm very very pleased right now that i can switch this quite uh, normally right now is is a normal switch but uh, the problem is that uh, uh, because i'm adding this this bigger resistive value the power is dissipated over it instead of um, the transistor itself my target is to stress the transistor well to a certain limit to a 50 degrees celsius and not the, really the the resistor that i'm having there i don't want the resistor to be stressed I want this one, the transistor to be stressed, to check its limits. So this is a little bit of problem and I will have to, to think about it, how to solve it. But for a good switching result and uh, not to activate the power supply uh, and, and to take care of the, the frequency, uh, to parallel the frequency that uh, we are reading on the drain, to be parallel to the one that is on the gate, we, we really need a bigger resistor here that is able to take some heat on it that 100 ohms at 5 watts was getting warmer but very very slowly but it was rising up in temperature i didn't stay and check the maximum it was going to heat up i only i don't know leave it like one minute probably 
and after one minute it got uh, warm 40 45 maybe degrees Celsius something like that but I, I check it with my my finger not uh, not with the electronic uh, thermometer I, I do check everything from time to time it is working for a couple of minutes here actually and I, I do check everything for heating up uh, the transistor is absolutely cold the chip itself is very cold uh, the resistor is very cold everything is cold and also the transformer here on its coil I'm putting my finger on its coil in the back here and it's also cold uh, by the way I'm feeding 10 volts uh, to this driver circuitry here and I'm very very pleased with this frequency here I'm not so pleased with this duty cycle it should have been 10% but for some reason uh, when I'm filming shit goes nuts right now but it was a 10% the first uh, time when I did the experiment with this resistor I don't know what I did back then and now it's not going down to, to back to 10% as it was I have no idea why I did though made a little trick let's say it, it's a trick I increased the voltage to 20 volts there so Watch the duty cycle, how it's changing from 90% to 15%. So right now I'm increasing the voltage up to 9, 20. Right now it's 20 volts on the driver and the duty cycle decreased to 14 there. Uh, this is a little kind of trick. And if I'm measuring it here on the gate, so right now peak to peak we have 7.8, uh, which is coming from here. But here I should have 20 volts. Okay, so now, so here is, yeah, 17 0.8 volts peak to peak uh, let me lower down it was 2.5 volts per division and now I'm making it 5 volts per division Let's see now yeah I see it's a uh, voltage peak to peak is 19.9 and it's 84 duty cycle very very close to 90 yeah uh, as being the inverse so now I, I put it back where it should have been so this is a little trick that I did to lower the duty cycle low enough usually all the tests that I did until now uh, and I'm trying to mirror uh, my American friend that he said to, to to make the experiment at 10 volts there for the driver and I am doing it uh, most most of the time so for a brief moment when I did the first test it, it got to 10% to 11% somewhere there but now something is weird maybe if I'm poking it like this I don't know yeah but something is weird and it doesn't want me to, to see it there uh, again but it is working absolutely fine fine so th this is the maximum of the potentiometer that I, I have there I cannot turn it more than this is, is absolutely the maximum so if i'm turning it this other way it's also reaching its maximum here and here the duty cycle is 88 percent you see and when i'm turning it here on this other side this is again the maximum is going only to 20 percent there that's the problem it's a little bit of problem and i believe uh it can be tweaked from these resistors here probably from this two diodes even mm, i'm not sure I, I really don't know how to tweak this circuit but i believe it is tweakable uh to get that 10% uh, duty cycle and it's as we've observed already it is dependent to the voltage so I, I am very very pleased very pleased with the experiment right now at this moment this is a successful experiment finally <laughs> finally but it it is still with uh, problems in the sense that this power resistor that I'm having here is is getting all the heat and what I really really wanted was to to leave all the heat on the transistor itself without this resistor and this was actually the first experiment that I did the very first one uh, with this variable power supply I, I powered here this power line and I didn't insert this uh, resistor and it started to, to oscillate my power supply <laughs> uh, if you remember and I got scared very very scared about it and I stopped everything and I changed it with this transformer that I can shoot in it it's a beating uh, transformer what I'm having here at least the experimentation that I'm doing right now this is a problem and I will think about it I'm, I'm not completely sure how I will manage to to switch uh, the power dissipation instead of that resistor into this transistor yeah we will see in the future what experiments I will manage to make but the purpose the um, functionality of this circuit right now is 100% and is mirroring perfectly the drain side, the gate side of the transistor, especially the, the frequency. The frequency is telling me that what I'm having here, I'm having here uh, on this other side. Even if the, the signal is inverted, doesn't matter, but the frequency is absolutely the same. And this is a very good, extremely good result and, uh, and reading. So the, the, this is a very excellent functionality. What I'm having here is, uh, I believe this is uh, by the book functionality, what I'm having right now. I will see what I can do to eliminate this resistor somehow and leave all the power to be dissipated only by the uh, transistor itself because this is the goal here to test the transistor when it's switching that's the, the idea I, I have some ideas but i don't want to to say anything at this moment uh, i will have to actually put them to test my ideas and we will see after that uh, how smart i am <laughs> uh, all right so i hope you like my my new development the, the problems that i got the lessons that we learned together here and uh, what you should pay attention to and what not to do you know and how to to clean everything and how to make it work. I hope it was a good lesson, all this uh, switching experiment, switching MOSFET experiment that I'm having right here. The real experiments for the transistor itself will come next. 
in the next videos. So stay tuned because the next videos we will really put to the test. If I will find a solution, of course, we will really power test this MOSFET in the next videos. I hope you like it. All right. Thank you very much from my favorite artist, Electronist. I say to you goodbye, bitches, and bye-bye. Uh,